Hi guys, welcome back to Mysteries channel. Thanks for clicking on the video, I really do appreciate it. Yesterday, I received a comment on one of my videos from Asa T. Thank you for commenting. One, it makes me feel good when people comment because then I know for sure people are actually watching it. Two, I really enjoyed this comment, particularly because they were asking me why the links weren't working. I love it because it shows me that you're not just taking somebody's word on the internet as though it's correct. You're actually doing your own research. You're looking at things. They were asking why the links to my Gateway Program 2 video, the Psychotronic Universe, weren't working. They were CIA links. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to try to go over some stuff really quickly here. First thing I want to tell you is that while everybody was out celebrating New Year's Eve, the CIA decided to do a reboot of their website. They changed the appearance of it a little bit and in doing so broke every single link on the website. Many of my notes look like this or they used to. They will no longer be like this because I've completely messed myself up. Whenever I came across something interesting in the CIA website that I thought might be related to something, I would just take the link, boop, and plug it in. These are all links that I knew were related to one another in one way or another. This one says LA War. This one CIA Stargate Lucifer. And because of this one, I remembered what, what the rest of these were actually about. But if I go to click on any of these links now, go to Lucifer first. Nope, that's a goner. This one, goner. Because I remembered what was what I had linked to this Stargate Lucifer, I don't even remember what this one was about at all. And it just pisses me off because I knew that somehow it was related to this. But anyway, I think this might be the Lucifer document, but notice it no longer looks the same as the old link, right? But here's where it gets weird. Let's take this one here. This whole CIA number, which is basically where they have decided to release it for information. They code it with a number, this number that's coded that ends with 90001-0. I have found, it is down here and look, 90001-0. Everything else is the same. If I click on this one here, broken. If I click on this one here, even though it looks, even though it looks exactly the same, it shows up. Oh, it just frustrates the crap out of me. It just really frustrates the crap out of me. So today I'm going to do this one differently than I've done my other CIA videos. I have tried to make this video several times in the past. It's very hard because each one of these packets that I have, like that's like a 10 page long packet. These are all very long packets and I only found a few of the links. I have about 10 links up here. I have about five links down here. I can't find all the links that I had before. And it does make me wonder, does the CIA do maintenance on their computers where they intentionally break every single link that might be saved somewhere just so it can erase stuff off the Freedom of Information Act library room? I personally think yes, but hey, I'm very suspicious of them anyway. So let's go over what I think this is all about. Now you'll see this was a bunch of interviews that spanned the course of a decade. It begins in 1978. The last one I found was in 1981, but I know up here there were later ones also associated with this weird room. They seem to be focused around a strange room. Now this room, I call it room 333, but sometimes they call it area 333. Sometimes they call it suite 333 and sometimes they call it building 333. But always you definitely get the impression that this is one place. I believe that it is a room inside of a building and they also sometimes call this room the safe. When I first started researching this, I came across information about this in a letter. This is the letter. This is the first time I ever actually came across it. What I find super interesting about this, let's read this letter. This is dated September 15th, 1981. It was approved for release on August 7th, 2000. This is written to a dear Lieutenant Colonel Watt. Enclosed are draft transcripts of side five, September 9th on site, side six, September 10th, and side seven, September 10th. As you have noted, the quality of the recording was poor and even on the original tape, not all of the words are intelligible. The reconstruction is the best possible under current press of time. On September 11th, we continued to work the problem. I attempted to break through the dominant impressions that Redacted was receiving concerning dangers resulting from the leakage. I had a detailed discussion with Redacted on weapon systems and exactly what the term meant to him. Frankly, I doubt that he received a psychic input in which weapon system came to him. I probably planted that term in his mind during questioning. I asked him to try again to describe the business of room 333. Conceded that we all agreed that the danger of a possible alien transmitter in the room was of utmost importance. He responded with the following psychic impressions. I did not question any of them in an attempt to develop detail or to gain a broader understanding of what they meant. 
Alex, I just want you to see how dumb this is. There's no way you're going to convince me that the CIA is this fucking stupid, that they're going to redact his name two times, but then just leave it right here when it actually says, what are you seeing? I mean, this is just part of their manipulation. They want you to know that the psychic named Alex saw this in his remote view session. One, rotation above the ground. Two, gathering of information. Three, the way information is received. Four, not just land information. Five, has something to do with water and something under the water. Six, it deals with a type of communication, relay communication. Please share the above with your customer. Hopefully some of them truly are hits. Sincerely, C.B. Jones. But do you see what I'm saying? This is definitely some of their manipulation. What do we see here? We definitely see room 333. This was the first one I found and I thought, oh my God, this might be a UFO thing. So I start really researching room 333 and I come across a bunch of different documents that span several years regarding room 333. Now, like I said, because I took poor notes before on these broken links, I'll never know which ones I'm missing, but for sure, this one is the first one that I found. Now in this, the geographic coordinate is redacted. The building referred to as is redacted and blank is redacted. They go on and on. I want you to see the length of these pack, this packet. It goes on and on and you can see over and over and over again, they are redacting what I'm guessing is room area or suite 333. They are definitely specifically in this thing looking for a room. And in this room, they know the geographic coordinates. They have a picture of the building and they want to know specifically what is happening in one room of this building. In fact, here they talk about it, a regular office. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. But what you get after reading this entire long thing that is convoluted with a lot of back and forth is that one people are operating in this room that are against the United States government but are United States citizens people in this room are both civilians and work for the government that they are opposed to people in this room are collecting information that have to do with crises they do not know if this crisis is going to be made by the people in this room or if they are just waiting for these crises to happen that they know about. And that information from this room is getting leaked out by an alien device that the remote viewer is having a very hard time explaining. The other information that you get from this is that the people in this room are extremely stressed out. They're in a very high stress environment. Also, we find out that the people in this room work for possibly the Department of Defense but not the military side of it. He says the more corporate side of it. These are corporate people that are working for the government in a government lease space that are against the US government. But he says not a country. It's not China. It's not Russia. It's not Central America is what they're saying in here. But it's another entity that's like a government run country. It's interesting. It's almost like, like these are people that maybe want to do a coup perhaps. It's just so weird anyway. But this is definitely some spy meet spy stuff. Now, they are saying that this, when this building was built, was in the mid 70s, and that when the building was built, this alien device was implanted in the building to relay information that is not audio information. The people that work in this room, that is sometimes called the safe, are under complete surveillance closed circuit television surveillance and that the stuff that's getting leaked out is not audio, but when it is leaked out, it's weird because he can't describe it. But what it almost sounds like is like, I don't know. It sounds like it's the internet. He's describing something he has no familiarity with, but he says information is able to escape this building when the other people want the information. It's not at a preconceived time or whatever. And it's not sound that's leaving the building. So it's not a message that's being called out and left somewhere. There's not a device that was planted in there listening to what they're talking about. And then, so they go on and on about what kind of equipment it is, what's in this room. And in this room, there is like a room within this room. There's a room within room 333. And I think that room is called the safe. And in that room is the apparatus which is able to send out information that's not audio. What's interesting here in the late 70s, they are asking, is it a computer? So it's not like they didn't know what computers were and they weren't using them, but I don't think that they had the internet back then, at least not widespread, right? This was more of a government thing back originally, originally. At this point in the document, you're going to start seeing the number 206 and then they bring up 210. 211. But even as you get further in, he's saying like, I feel like those, I'm saying those, but I don't want to. It's something else. It's a, there's a number that's important. Very strange. And then he talks about that there is someone who is going to die and that 
He doesn't know if they have already died or if they're going to die in the future, but somehow somebody that's connected to this room is going to be killed. They continue on a little bit more about this guy, what he's going to be dressed, why he's getting killed, and it all has to deal with information that's coming out of this room. And the reason why I'm not reading this is because this is some of their earlier stuff and it goes on for friggin' ever, like forever, ever. And there's a lot of back and forth between them. All right, let's go to the next one. Go to this one. This is another grill flame. And this is a few years later. This is in, oh look, December of 1982. Again, the target area right here, it's blanked out. But look at this, interviewing 01. While you're in the building, I'd like you to focus on room, room 333, room 333. Expand your awareness to that room, enter that room, describe this room. He gets in there and he starts to focus on the room, room 333, which I think the last interview was also talking about. And guess what they're talking about? The same damn thing. Two years later, they're still thinking about what happened in this room. What are they doing in this room? Is there a leak in this room? They're talking about the way the furniture is set up the way the cubicles are set up, the way there are benches. They are going over the employees of this room. They're describing how one of the higher ups is now a female. She has blonde hair. She's stern. She eats like shit. <laughs> like they're really going into every part of it. Now they're talking about the room behind the steel door and describes what it's like. It supports communications equipment. They're describing the outside of the building, the parking lot, and that this is an environmentally controlled room. It's a dust-free room. It's a room that a lot of precautions are taken so that foreign objects cannot get into this room. They say that in this building that there is a courtyard and that there is a large sculpture type thing in the front or groups of sculptures that are tall and narrow in sections. He also says that, and I quote, it says, I have a gut feeling that this is uh, some kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, some kind of an aerospace vehicle type plant or design or construction area. That they're designing or constructing some form of uh, item for use possibility with space shuttle or with a rocket or something. I don't know. It's, you know, I just get a feeling like it's a space use type thing and that it's some form of targeting device or some aiming device or targeting device. I just get that gut feeling with this entire scenario. That's what it's about, I guess. So isn't it strange that the CIA is spying on a different government agency that's developing space shuttle or rocket for the space shuttle. It's just super bizarre and that they've already devoted two years of it. And these are just the ones I found. I just want to make this abundantly clear. There may be a bunch more documents tied to room 333 that have not been released for the rest of us to see. And there might be a bunch more of those that are released that I just haven't found yet because they, they don't put it under what you're looking for. Like I can write down room 333, put that in the description box and I might not get anything. But again, in typical CIA fashion, they like to list the basic measurements of the women that are working. <laughs> Strange. But okay, here is the interior of the room right here. You can see that these are the different cubicles where they're not completely separated from one another like the other guy said. And then here is the steel door. The steel door leads to the other room, the safe room. And then here is the main object. I don't know what that is about. Oh, here, here you go. The steel door that shut. And it looks, it literally looks like a room that's a safe, right? Anyway, continue. Here's some more. This is the interior of the safe room. Here's the object on the cart, which I believe may be a printer or computers. Or I think that this is, they're using internet technology back then and he didn't have words for it. That's what I really think is going on. And that is what the, the leak, the leak may have been. This one's another one that I'm pretty positive is tied to room 333. Let's go through this one really quick. Now we see initials S and A. We already know A is Alex and then S is obviously Scott. Now Alex lets him know, I know that there is some connection between the machine and concerning the machine and the information that is put into the vault, specifically information that's being saved onto some tapes magnetic tapes perhaps and they continue what kind of information is it is it photographs are they aerial photography ground photography is it both and here colonel watt is brought up in this one remember in that letter i read to you this is the information that colonel watt wanted from the tapes and so right now there is a huge sense of urgency to find out the leakage in that building that's all they want if nothing else comes out of this that is the most important factor involved. Alex is starting to talk about this feeling that he's he's having. He says, now let's talk over this. 
Is the person who is carrying this device the young man who you think has disappeared or will disappear and be killed? And Alex says yes. So two years later, they don't know if this person was killed or wasn't killed or disappeared because he, he goes back and forth like he thinks he's dead, but it's because he disappeared. And so he says, yes, that is it. And he says, what he is now feeling is that it did happen. This is something that happened in the past. So that guy that disappeared, it's already happened and that he can't get past that until he says this one thing. Now he's saying that some of these people that work in this office, some of them are white, some of them are oriental as he puts it, he doesn't know. You can't say Chinese, Japanese, just Asian, but they're all American and they're normal to the office. They're still trying to figure out if another country is employing these people, I think. And then here's where it gets interesting. This is another reason why I know this has to do with 333. One, we already know that Alex and Colonel Watt are part of it. So we already have those two tied from the letter, but down here it says, I have not had psychic emotion like this in a couple of months. And the last time that I had before this session, my question is, has any young man, and I'm not talking about here and now, I get a feeling has ever left this post and no word has ever heard from it and nothing has been done because of its disappearance. So now he's saying something interesting. He's very, very, very stuck on this dude that disappeared before he thought for sure that he was killed, but now it seems like he might not have been killed. He's just disappeared because he doesn't say killed. He doesn't say murdered every time. He almost always says, disappeared. This person disappeared and no one has done anything about it. Is there a reason why or has this happened? And Scott says it's a large post, like maybe, I don't know, kind of being ambiguous. Like you would know if somebody was murdered or somebody just went missing, especially in a location that is tied to some very high top secret stuff, right? And then Scott says, you mean within the area, secure area where building 303 is located, that area? And then he says, I mean, 333. And Alex says, yeah, that's what he's asking in that area. So anyway, the security of this area, whether or not this is something that has to do with patriotism or blackmail, sounds right up the CIA's alley doesn't it? Blackmail. Scott says, okay, we're talking about now about the person that I identified as an agent in place. You say that he was recruited and you are not sure whether it was out of greed or lack of patriotism or blackmail or something. Was he recently recruited or within a year or 10 years? No, recently. By recently, I mean by within a couple of years, two years, but not someone who's been in the service for 10 or 15 years in the service of the United States. I want to get an identification of this person. Now, Alex says, possibly he is a young man in his 30s, married, possibly hazel eyes, maybe six foot. I mean, it's just like, what? probably owns a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, maybe even a private enterprise headquartered in DC. Hmm, you don't say. Then they spend a few moments trying to clarify like Washington DC as in the DC. The answer is yes, it's that DC. Freaking nitwits, I swear to God. Oh, here, also interestingly, in DC, he wants to know that if it means anything, he's in the network. I think it does mean something. I'm just saying he's in the network, he's in DC. He's working for the government against the government. It's just very interesting to read all this shit from the 80s that looks like it's still playing out today, you know. Like Alex states that there is something very small, like a dot. He's like, dot, dot. In my head, I'm thinking it's dot com. He's like, it's a some kind of system, like a cartridge. There's some kind of system going on. It's not, it has to do with the computer. He's like, it's like a little computer. And Scott says, is that what it is? He's like, no, this is not the computer part that he's, he's focusing on. It's something inside of the computer. It's like a little cartridge or something. It's this little dot, he keeps saying. This little dot with some components is able to send out messages. And that's like a transmitter. It's exceedingly small, very small pin size maybe. It's just super tiny, like a dot. It's disguised or embedded or part of the normal electronic component in that the younger man, the agent in place, he's carrying this handheld computer that's able to transmit messages. I think Alex is super concerned about this guy disappearing. If he hasn't disappeared yet, can Alex stop a man from possibly being killed or getting disappeared? And I think this is why Alex is having a hard time with this remote view session. He's like very attached to knowing that he could possibly have some kind of input on whether a man lives or dies in the future if this hasn't already occurred and it's messing with him emotionally. And here's what's super, super interesting. Alex is kind of going off on this and Scott's like, we don't even know what happened. 
listen, would you be able to give me a more precise information if we could get you into and get it? He says, sweet 333. And Alex says, no, I will still pick up the emotions from now on because they are worried that they are being listened to themselves. They're gonna call it the Z network without referring to listening devices or receivers or room 333. This is where they're gonna start really redacting room 333. Um, Let me go back to this one here really quick. I wanna show you. I believe this is that Lucifer one that I had found up here that I can no longer find this one. There were a couple on this one. I can't say for a fact that this is room 333, but I feel like it might be room 333. This is a different psychic that is doing it. He talks about the architecture of this place. It's got a very heavy stone architecture in that he says over and over again that this place, it's whitewash. It's trying to make you think it's something it's not. This place is a facade. There's a different function of this area but he cannot figure out what it is. He speaks of a courtyard as well. He actually gives a description at the back of this what the courtyard looks like. But he also says that there are very strong functionary type things from this building. Like maybe it's designed to look like it is a university, a place of study, something like that. But really it's not. He has terrible feelings about this building. It's like a honorarium of some sort like it reflects revered things for a person or an object but still it doesn't make sense he he has bad hard feelings it's a hard feeling to describe but it does not make him feel well there's some kind of falsehood or facade that is happening here they talk about there's a square courtyard large blocks it's encircled the courtyard is encircled it's well manicured but it's completely desolate there's nobody hardly there there's a tremendous feeling like there's this tremendous feeling that's false it's eyewash beyond the facade, beyond the falseness. They want to know what the true meaning of this place is. And he keeps saying he's got a very uncomfortable feeling about the whole damn thing. The whole thing makes him feel very uncomfortable and how everything is made to look like it's supposed to be enjoyed and be revered by people, but it's all a lie. And that there's quite a few modern buildings, but also some heavy architecture is evident. This place is designed to look like it's inviting and that you're there to learn, but it's really meant for you to stay away from. Look, but don't touch. Eyewash. He says, that there's almost a psychosis about it very heavy feelings he would not appreciate living there you go on a bit more about the courtyard and that as you walk into very large big doors very large doors you're going to come to face with a staircase but on the side there is a large photograph or picture or painting of a man he doesn't see any hair but he has a beard he had a beard and a mustache very rugged sort of like lucifer That's why it was named that on the CIA uh, thing, why they had it on there. But it says sort of like Lucifer, decorative iron fences, wood slats, walkway on both sides, devoid of people, designed for people, but nobody should go there. Nobody goes there. That's not what it's meant for. There's a very empty feeling associated with this place. Two-story buildings, tall windows, rounded tops, that there is a colonnade possibly there, a circular type driveway there. He gets a strong feeling that it's redone, refurbished, populated with people, but it's all meaningless. It's trickery or something. He also gets the feeling that there is some study or conscious endeavor that is happening or going on there. There's a university type atmosphere. It is designed to look like it's pleasing for people, but it is not for people to enjoy. He just keeps going back to fakery, ridiculous scene done for eyewash. And then, oh look, this is where he is describing. So it looks like redstone, heavy stone. He did say that the windows were arched perhaps, courtyard. There's the uh, face of Lucifer. It's the door you walk into, the staircase you would go up. I believe that's the colonnade and the street by it. He did say there's some kind of onion-shaped something in the courtyard. I don't know. But anyway, I know I lost a bunch of damn papers on it and it just pisses me off so friggin' bad. I know I'm missing a big part of what this all is and what it means. All right, guys, so... So I just want to go back in here and show you. It used to be a different way to do it, but since we're on here anyway, I want to show you just to get to the Freedom of Information Act reading room now. There used to be a little spot up here where you did it. Now you got to go scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's right down here. But anyway, the reason why we're back on here is because I want to show you who I think room 333 is. I believe that it's some place called SRI. SRI International was once part of Stanford Research Institute. The reason why I believe that room 333 is SRI or a portion of SRI is because, well, I'll show you why, but look, we're going into a letter to SRI International from Sanitized Subject, 
SRI remote viewing documents declassified. So we know that they were part of this whole deal as well. And what this is, is confirming that SRI has no objection to CIA declassifying the original association it had with SRI during the early 1970s when SRI was pursuing remote viewing investigations for ORD. Long story short, one, we know that SRI worked with the CIA in the pursuit of the development of remote viewing technologies. We also know that the founder of the Gateway program worked for Stanford Research Institute on top of what I really wanted to show you is this one. Their address is 333 Ravenswood Avenue. Now that's not the only address for SRI, but that is I think the original address for SRI. Now, SRI used to be the Stanford Research Institute International, and then it split with the school of Stanford. Why, you ask? Well, because in the 1970s, students were getting sick and tired of helping fund research that was being used to develop weapons of mass destruction and other weapons that were being used in the Vietnam War. Stanford Research or Stanford University saw a sharp decline in students applying to go to their school as well as a lot of protests in the area. So they decided to separate that portion of their school from Stanford. So the Stanford Research Institute ended up splitting from Stanford University and becoming its own entity and it no longer has Stanford associated with it at all. It's now SRI and they say it's for Scientific Research Institute, but originally it was Stanford Research Institute. Another interesting little tidbit of information is that we have Stanford University, SRI, Stanford Research Institute, or what was formerly known as Stanford Research Institute and Lockheed Martin and a lot of other military industrial complexes all very close to one another. In fact, this right here, this whole complex here, that's Lockheed Martin. So it's gonna be this and all of this Lockheed. In fact, I think all, all of this. Then if we come up here, it'll show you Stanford University, but what we really want is Menlo Park. There we go. Now this, it's gonna say this is SRI right here, but it's not just this. This is all part of SRI as well. So it's almost like you go, in fact, let's see if it'll show us on here. If we do one of these bad boys. All of this right here, there's no uh, roads in here. That my friends, that's SRI. Now it's gonna make it look like the stuff is all connected, but I assure you, just like with Lockheed Martin and all those other facilities such as DARPA, there is a gate to check in. And one time I actually did go on here on Street View. Let's see if I can do it again. And you can literally walk up to the gate through Street View. There it is. There's one of the gates. I'm sure there's gates all around it so that only employees can get in there. But it does make sense, right? There's government employees. There's non-government employees. There's people that are not a fan of the US government all working together on this project. And the CIA was getting ultra hyper paranoid about it. What I did find interesting is that everybody said that SRI, well, they didn't say SRI, but room 333 or area 333 was there just for looks. It's eyewash. It wants you to think it's a university, but it's not. What is it? SRI, 63% of the stuff that comes out of SRI is tied to the Department of Defense. Some other super interesting stuff is that a professor at SRI is the first one in the early 1960s to develop the world's first all magnetic digital computer. His name was Hewitt Crane. And in 1966, it also developed the first artificial intelligence center, began working on what's called the shaky robot, the first mobile robot to use reason about its actions. In 1969, the first connection on a wide area network used packet switching called ARPANET. It also installed the first 10X system outside of the BBN. And in 1977, November 2nd of 1977, SRI originated the first connection between three separate networks. Data flowed seamlessly through the mobile packet radio van between SRI in Menlo Park, California, UCLA, and University College of London, England. So I think that's what that whole room 333 was. I don't know. Is that what it was? The development of the internet? The CIA is getting freaked out? All the remote viewers see that there's a leak that's transferring information without it being audio recorded. 
I think it's interesting, but I think this might be case solved. I don't know who the hell Lucifer was in there, but it was probably a founding member of someone that has to do with Stanford, I'm guessing. Anyway, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys have yourselves a very great day.